Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, fuck. Uh, let's see here. Which, uh, which microphone to default to? Um, can you guys hear me well, or does it sound... God, I keep fucking up these, uh... Is the uh, audio coming in for the Yeti mic, or? Well, okay, cool, 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 cool. So, um, yeah, uh, let me do some basic adjustments. So I figured since uh, Wolfgang did that, uh, what is it, Libreboot X200 live stream, and, you know, I do have some Libreboot X200s or yet to be Libre booted X200s and parts sitting over here. I figured, uh, how hard could it be? Right? I mean, it's got a got piles of RAM. Um, and some of it, I mean, uh, oh, audio is loud here. Um, I'm always horrible at live streams, but uh, let me get some of this RAM together. It's typically wise to use uh, matching RAM sticks. So, but um, let's see if I can actually pivot this a little bit further down. So. Before I actually got into doing this live stream, I had to deal with network troubleshooting because the little uh, Netgear Wi-Fi extender in the corner that this uh, computer is now plugged into um, doesn't differentiate between like 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz bands. And it's pretty far from the house. It wouldn't ever connect to the 5 gigahertz one. And it would default to that and then just time out. So... Anyways, though, um, uh, hopefully uh, don't put my router's administrator passwords on stream. That'd be a bad idea. Um, but uh, let's uh, get into Libre booting stuff and see if we have all our material here. The ironic part of installing Libre Boot is having to do the BIOS updates from Windows for the EC firmware. Uh, I mean, they do provide uh, bootable disks, but this is typically just the easiest for me. So let's actually get one of the uh, computers assembled because that'd be a good idea since we're pretty much starting from what I would call scratch here. You know, we got our uh, motherboard ordered in bulk from a crate. Two of them, actually, depending on... Uh, the audience reception and how long this goes, I might do two, but then we got our uh, base plates. And this one is actually from a X201, I believe. So um, that has a slightly different motherboard and I didn't really feel like uh, making angle grinding, the or not angle grinder, Dremel tool the live stream. So, um, we're gonna use some actual proper X200 base plates. Even though I do like using these screens from the X201 because they are pretty much always uh, LED. Unless someone's been doing some weird uh, lid transplants. So let's see where the uh, X200s are. That'd be a good idea. Hmm. So I got the base plate and the motherboard. I guess we can do the thermal paste at the moment. Uh, it's wise to touch something metal before you... Uh... Okay, yeah, sure. I, I don't have my own fab. Uh, I clicked in to start my building some Core 2 Duo processors and a motherboard. Um... You know, I have always been interested in like making like a 
you know, some sort of 8-bit C80 computer at some point. But uh, hey, fat Elvis, uh, what's up? Uh, sorry if uh, I made that a little bit bad for replay, but uh, he was commenting, or I Quixen was commenting on my uh, comment saying I was making it from scratch, but... You know, of course, I'm not, you know, fabbing the, uh, wait, do I have to make the acids too if it's, uh, if I make the fab from like scratch? Like how, how far back are we going here? Do I have to like, I don't, I don't know exactly know what uh, acids they use for that. And then like the, uh, like machinery and do I have to cast it or should I like start off and like, you know, uh, 1000 BCE. Uh, okay, uh, I click him says everything. And Michael uh, Valentino says, uh, well, Z80 chips are fun, which, you know, I actually do own a few Z80 systems, but the only one that actually is in functioning condition is, is the... Zilog uh, Z80, which I own. And um, these uh, are ordered in bulk, and they're supposedly pre-tested. So hopefully everything goes without a hitch on this. If not, I bought like 10 of them. So, But uh, so far, the ones uh, I've got have been working. I had one. I do like some slight stress testing before I ship them out when I if I sell one of these, but um, in one case, uh, USPS Air mail kind of caused uh, unexpected motherboard failure on a system that was working on the way out, which was kind of a pain, and I didn't really plan the return infrastructure too well, but uh, I did end up giving the refund, and I got that X200 back to screen, and everything still works. It's just I don't know, maybe USPS likes throwing packages around. I typically use UPS, but... Yeah, there's about four screws here, three on the little base plate, and uh, one over here that you have to remove. And then you can just unplug the fan. Um, so let's look. I didn't realize that this... Computer was uh, gonna be blocking out the entire. I don't know what brand glasses these are. Uh, guitar mat. They are uh, from Korea, and I didn't buy them, but uh, they were cheap. Um, probably. I think I'm gonna do like uh, make like some sort of stress testing uh, script to kind of make my life a little bit easier. But um, at the meantime, uh, I'm probably not going to have these up for sale immediately. But, uh, you know, since I've been kind of taking a semester off from college uh, involuntarily, uh, I have uh, since um, accumulated a lot of credit card debt. Not like a ridiculous amount, but enough where... Uh, I would say I would want to resell these computers at some point. Maybe I should have just applied for a job. It's too late now, though, because January's coming, and I need to finish my degree so I can get like actual work instead of like, you know, uh, uh, being a online computer repairman. I'm not even quite sure that's a profitable career. Kind of concerns me the lithium ion batteries on my desk are unexpectedly warm. Hopefully, it wasn't shorting something. Hey, I mean, they are not my mom's glasses. I bought uh, four different colors and uh, I lost two of them. I'm still looking for. Well, not isopropyl alcohol. I mean, they have, but in the meantime, the little rags I used to, like the microfiber cloths, I put them all behind here and didn't realize how hard it was going to be to reach around this T500 this point. 
Okay. Got some. Yeah. And uh, let's look for the isopropyl alcohol bottle. There we go. So now we're just going to get the least dirty microfiber cloth. Touch something metal again. Huh? Oh. Living above means like every student Moscow says. I mean, it's not too bad. I think I have to pay like $35 this month. And I mean, essentially after that, I'm going back to school. So uh, I can use my college fund to cover rent and not live at my parents' house. And I kind of made the mistake of uh, buying a bunch of inventory and not actually selling any. So I am actually sitting not entirely on a Weber booted think pads, but I'm sitting about on $1,000 worth of resellable computers. Uh, for example, I have a, a T440, a T540P, an X240, and uh, all those are missing is a hard drive caddy. But I'm probably just gonna sell those locally. Uh, oh, uh, T. Uh, Torchon says most secure operating system, uh, Libre Boot with Trisco or Core Boot ME Cleaner with Cubes. Uh, describe the differences. Do you sell systems? How do we contact you? Okay, uh, so I guess I'm gonna take a little pause here while the alcohol dries and answer this question. So the um, prime most secure system isn't even gonna be x86, if you wanna to go to that extreme. Um, they, Intel never released uh, microcode patches for anything earlier than, uh, I believe the first generation i-series, I'm not entirely sur sure, it might've been a uh, Sandy Bridge for Spectre and Meltdown, so, also, if you want a truly security-focused OS, Cubes isn't a bad option, but uh, there are some pra more practical ones, I think, for daily use. Uh, I'm not entirely sure because, yeah, that's, that's what I should have mentioned. I clicked in OpenBSD. Um, yeah, but uh, I think Cubes, doesn't they have like some sort of uh, you know modularization sort of thing? But um, I think you can, if you want to actually have the most secure, get like a, one of those old like ultra spark systems and put open BSD on it, compile everything yourself, look through all the code. They use open firmware. And yeah, I mean, it'd be a little bit extreme and, you might be lugging around a late 90s uh, supercomputer. I need to get my Ultra 80 to work, or I, I guess technically, it's not really a supercomputer, but it's an expensive workstation. Okay, so, by the way, I uh, spend way too much time making these just look just, sh just shiny. For some reason, I get really OCD about it. I don't know why. But anyways, uh, time for the next step here. Oh, wait. Actually, I thought of something more secure. You could go make your own, uh, like, fab, design your own chip that you know everything on it secure, and do the whole, you know, going from absolute scratch. Make sure you even have, like, secure glass or uh, silicon or whatever it is. Oh, uh, T. Torchin says, how do we contact you? Um, I answer emails kind of infrequently, but I typically answer most YouTube comments. There's a few I miss every now and then, but I try to answer most of them, at least the serious ones. And I do have, I even answer some of the unserious ones, just because I'm kind of bored, I don't know. Um, 
Libra Silicon is literally what you just said, says Guitar Bat. Well, I mean, if you want to go to extremes and have limitless money, you could probably do something like that. Uh, Uh, Eclipsim says open BSV is great, but uh, the driver situation on BSV in general is not very good. Um, yeah, I'd kind of agree with that. I'm not a huge uh, BSD user. Uh, I played around with NetBSD and FreeBSD. And um, yeah, that was uh, FreeBSD is kind of like the, you call the, Debian of BSVs probably, but uh, at that point I rather just use Debian unless you have like some sort of uh, licensing issue. Oh man. I'm gonna pour some iced tea because I'm out of caffeine. Um, okay, let's, let's see here. Uh, what is my email? Oh, tripcode q7 at uh, gmail.com. So, okay. Um, Michael Valentino says Linux gives me headaches and I've been using it since the 90s. Doesn't it make subs half the time, but OpenBSD just clicks for me. I learned Unix before Linux, so probably will. I mean, I think that's just like a changing uh, ecosystem thing. So I, it's actually kind of a fun read. I've been, I read like, I think I like 50 or 60 pages of it. I'm probably going to finish it at some point. Unix Haters Handbook or UG. It's on. Um, okay. Um, sorry, it's kind of hard to pay attention to everything at once, but I need to find my thermal case. Uh, guitar, okay, Boomer. I said that for guitar mat, but no, I mean, uh, what I was going to say though was uh, like. If you actually read the uh, Unix Haters Handbook, it was a lot of people were moving from um, Lisp machines and things like that. So it was actually, uh, and early Unix kind of had a lot more issues. And I also learned something that is still kind of, but I would say a little bit dangerous as a command in modern day Linux, which I found out not our still works. And that just pulls up some random command and executes it. And I guess it's not random, but from another shell or something, and then you're running in Zorg. So for me, it always pulls up Ranger, but imagine if I you know, had some script that removed uh, the contents of a directory or something. But if you type in the exclamation point R and press enter, uh, it will automatically execute some sort of command. So you guys can try that. Um, um, Philip, uh, woke talk says, as a C programmer, I'd love to use OpenBSV daily. Uh, I mean, I don't know, I've been having an okay time with uh, Debian programming mainly. C and C++. I really shouldn't have put all my supplies behind the laptop. Oh, it's a bad idea. Bad call on me. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, T.Torchin, tripcodec7 uh, at gmail.com. Okay, maybe if I just move the webcam for a second. Oh, yeah. Look back here. We're looking for a miscellaneous ThinkPad key. The webcam back. And maybe I can, I get kind of, uh, 
OCD about this part too. So I kind of just spend like an infinite amount of time just making this as absolutely thin as possible, even though it doesn't really matter as much with this type of thermal paste. With the Arctic uh, MX uh, Silver, I think it makes more of a difference. And, yeah, I don't know. Here, I'm gonna move this, so it'll make it easier. I know like air bubbles can be a thing with this, but I've honestly got cooler temps doing it in this method. And I do actually do some sort of stress testing on these. And I don't know, the things like the T500 over there just kind of, you know, get stressed. Also, by the way, if you're wondering about the thermals on the T500 quad core, they are uh, very meh. <laughs> like I have the Q9100, which isn't the fastest chip. There's a QX9300 and it outputs enough heat where if I'm not running ThinkFan, the thing will actually like get up to 90 degrees Celsius and things like that, which I am not really okay with. So I put ThinkFan on there and now it just sounds like a blow dryer when it gets hot. But it's quite a bit more powerful, I'd say. Oh, and uh, if it randomly dies during the live stream, it's probably not the actual computer, but I have a fatty Dove SSD in it because I got it for like 13 or $14. And it's been an unreliable nightmare of a solid state drive. Like I bought used lot auction solid state drives from, and before, not ones that put like, like 64 gig drives and things like that have been heavily used for like $5 a pop. And those have been more reliable than the fatty dove. But it's actually a contact issue. So I just put in like, uh, I think a rubber band <laughs> at the end of the caddy. I mean, it actually has all the screws in it, too. It's just, uh, I don't know. I don't want like it. I don't know, I actually uh, volunteered recently at uh, Goodwill Computer Center. It was, uh, oh, was it for like, it was actually voluntary, but uh, I found out a few things about how what a refurbished computer means nowadays. So actually most people don't do the thermal paste and most people don't actually bother with things that don't at least like run Windows 8. <laughs> Because when you have a company, I imagine the uh, let's just buy $3 uh, product keys off eBay doesn't work. But for me, since everything's like free software, I don't really have to deal with that part. So I don't know. But unfortunately, though, because the systems are older, I get really obsessive about the thermal paste and I'm still trying to make it as smooth as humanly possible without like special equipment. At some point you have to wonder if it's even worth doing this or just putting like the little drop in the middle. So I know like the point of it is just to like fill in the little crevices in the metal and make the contact a bit more, but I did actually notice some thermal improvements this way. Not like by a huge margin, but maybe a degree Celsius or two. But, okay, if I spend any more time on this, I'm just gonna feel like an idiot. So let's check the chat. Um, oh. Uh, guitar Matt says, I have OCD for solder wires. 
except that causes burns on the skin when you spend too long on it. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention uh, earlier, thanks for the $5. Uh, sorry about not mentioning that uh, in the super chat thing. Um, Gabriel Dennis says, hey, Trip, is it possible to Weaver boot a T430? No, but it is possible to core boot it. You will have to use some binary blobs. So let's uh, get this back together now. Just going to put that on the back. Thermal paste is non-conductive, so, but it does look a bit messy. And this stuff kind of tends to feel weird on your hands after a while. But uh, let's put this in. I do these first three, three screws. Just put a little bit of tension on them, not like all the way in at first, just to make sure everything's aligning. And there is actually a metal bracket on the back that you kind of have to hold in. Um, but boy, off Reiko says, is R9K dead? forever because of propane and computers being used for alternative lifestyles. I am really just thrown off by that comment. I mean, I haven't used the R9K in many, many years, and I don't uh, is being used for alternative lifestyles, and w why would that would affect R9K? I mean, propane, uh, I like the you know whole King of the Hill bit about it, um, LP gas seems a little bit more useful, though, in my opinion. Um, computers, uh, I like computers. I'm sure people that have alternative lifestyles who use computers every once in a while. Uh, what is the alternative to? Like, are you talking about like off the grid people? Because it can, that kind of screams like, uh, you know propane and stuff like that. And I, I thought those people, I, you know what, I'm just gonna get off this diatribe. Oh man, sometimes it's kind of annoying to get the holes in right. Honestly, if I didn't repaste these, the build would go so much quicker. So I wouldn't have to uh, take out the motherboard. But my main issue with actually lever booting these and making money and selling them wasn't uh, the time it took to put them together. Personally, I don't mind doing this type of work. It's really just the lack of availability of X200s. So I couldn't get them on a reliable basis. And, um, you know, I, I can actually modify the cases, but uh, I only did that on one model. And it was the one that got shipped back. So I'm not even quite sure that's a good strategy. So at this point, it's like not actually that profitable. So I'm kind of just going through my leftover inventory for this and moving on to something else. Maybe a different model system. I don't know. Maybe something completely different. Uh, like, who knows? Maybe I'll make an app. That's what I need to do, make an app. It'll be like, um, oh, actually I had an idea for an app, but uh, I don't think people, it's been, the one person I told it to, they shot down my app idea, which um, was essentially, we use, I'm not even quite sure this app would be legal, but, uh, there are things like Wireshark that don't actually have to connect to the network. And we can just use the packet sniffer to look up their internet history and things like that and compare it to statistical data uh, and get what types of personalities the people are and their intelligence level. And then I could avoid talking to them. It could be like the app for people that are really bad in social situations. And I could just be like, okay, avoid 
did. But uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I'm not that quite level neat yet where I have to avoid everybody, but there are certain uh, times I can get uh, a little bit aggravated with certain people. Uh, typically, I'm pretty friendly. But there are certain, let me, let me think of a hobby I just like. I mean, like, like I can even go hiking sometimes and enjoy that. So, and that's pretty outdoorsy. Uh, I don't really do that that often. You can probably tell from my physique. Uh, I don't know if these foam uh, pads are actually supposed to be there. Something I wondered. Little foam pads on the back of these. Uh, I don't think I should tear them off. Oh, we'll worry about it later. So it goes in like this on the motherboard. And um, I don't know, it's been a while since I built one of these. So let's clean up some of the thermal paste here. This is literally not going to matter in performance or anything like that. Oh, guitar Matt dislikes football. I mean, I had a friend that liked football, and I couldn't really get into it. I mean, I don't personally like, you know, dislike it. I think the uh, I think I, I don't like magic crystals. You know, like when people talk about how the crystals, you know, energize them or whatever. I I, I don't like that actually. I've actually encountered a few people like that. And I'd wish not to encounter those people. Maybe I could just be like, you know. But, you know, and then again, you wouldn't need the app because they typically tell you about the crystals, how much money they wasted on snake oil and rock form. Uh, but boy, oh, off Rako's trip, what happened to you... UT effort. Michael Valentino says magic football crystal apps. Oh, Zing2 says I just like anime. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it is. I don't know if like, I actually can't really hang out with the people that are like super weebs a lot of the time. But I can watch some anime. It's just like any other form of entertainment. But the one thing I dislike about it is the fact that you actually have to read the subtitles. And then I can't do something else while watching it. it looks like it's back together. Got a nice little setup here. And um, is this is the motherboard I got out of the case. Believe it is. And yeah, okay. So to install this, well, I'm gonna need screws eventually, but in the meantime, we can just set it down like this. Uh, what's so weeb uh, distro tube asks? Oh, um, it's pretty much a phrase to describe like the type of people that are really into anime constantly. And uh, I don't know if uh, you're a little bit older, but they had uh, like anime clubs in the college I went to, like Texas A&M even. And they had them in my high school. And it's typically people that get really obsessed about those cartoons to the point where they're kind of just can't stop talking about it all the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like, I know a few weeps. They're okay sometimes. Like uh, one of my uh, best friends in college, all he could really talk about most of the time was, not all of the time, but most of the time was uh, a combination of anime and uh, VW Beatles and cars in general. 
which was, you know, I, I mean, I like cars. So. And I do like some anime, so it wasn't actually horrible. Okay, time to transfer our little uh, daughter board over here. It says uh, RD450, and it's from a X200. The uh, X201 actually has two speakers. So this is actually an X200 board. Could have just used this weirdly. But um, yeah, let's then screw this. Michael Valentino uh, likes off-brand Chinese anime. Oh, Distro 2, got it. Okay. Um, Arc users. Okay, that's actually pretty funny. But. Oh, what, what distro does. Uh, I, I don't think I would even want to attempt that distro tube. Like, I mean, you could probably. There's a small chance you could port Core Boot to it. But uh, I've seen disassemblies for some of the Microsoft Surface stuff. And it generally just seems like an awful time. Like, and then after that, you'd have to find like potentially like motherboard diagrams, which I, I don't know. I've only briefly talked on the uh, Libreboot IRC about doing ports because uh, I was a little bit interested in porting um, Libreboot to like the uh, Aspire one, like the first one with the Intel, like generation with the original Intel Atoms, just because I kind of like those machines, weirdly. They're extremely cheap and they have uh, some similar hardware to some of the currently existing core boot machines. And it wouldn't be an impossible port it might be a uh, biting off a bit more than I can chew, though, because I haven't done a port before. But it did seem kind of interesting. Uh, well, I mean, the main thing is, uh, like, I doubt it's going to be software flashable or a Microsoft Surface tablet. And if I'm thinking of the right thing, I believe it got a... Like I fix it or someone ranked it as a higher uh, your assembly difficulty on one of the surfaces than like some of the new Macs, which is quite ridiculous because the new Macs uh, are, all, are put together kind of to stay together until an authorized service representative uh, fixes it or sells you another more likely. Uh, this screw is a little bit stripped, so I'm going to go into my screw mug. Oh, man, you guys are going to get a kick out of this. I think, actually, uh, Guitar Matt C sent this, but, like, uh, as a little, like, Luke Smith boomer and this meme, the Weaver boot. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like this thing, even though uh, it looks a little bit silly. Uh, um, okay, let me look at chat. Uh, Luke didn't design that mug. Uh, I don't know who did the Luke Smith uh, picture, but I, I also don't know who did this picture, but it was posted uh, to my first image board a long time ago. And I, I just kind of find it hilarious, but. Oh God, maybe the screw mug was a bad idea. So like this has everything from like X200 to T T40 parts. Maybe some X220 screws mixed in, I have no clue. But find somewhere I can just kind of 
I swear if after this project, after we sort all the screws, just gonna be sad or refine them. Uh, well, let's screw that back together here. And uh, we're gonna take this cable and all for these little slot type connectors, all you have to do is pull up like that. Oh, here, let me do it again. You just kind of pull up and you put the thing in the slot. It's not too difficult. Mm. This cable seems to be a little bit uh, bent though, so I might actually swap that out. I have an extra somewhere. Okay, yeah, here's an extra. Wait. I would actually, I would love to have, I would actually buy one if it was a mug with Stallman eating his own foot. Uh, he's just never gonna live that down in my opinion. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. Defending his friend after whatever scandal thing apparently got the public attention more than him eating his foot. But uh, eating his foot has kind of, I don't know, it's just, admirable that you can have a be like some sort of a political spokesman and at the same time be doing stuff like eating your own foot in public so um there's literally oh Hmm. I don't want to get into a Mac OS debate, mainly because I've never used Mac OS. So, well, a, uh, I've never used it. Like, fuck. Uh, I hate the hardware. It seems to be working just fine for me. I mean, the biggest difficulty I had with it recently is I wanted to run Photoshop. So all I did was make like a IBM... I took an IBM T43, I wonder if it's within reach here. No, it isn't, but I'm gonna make a video on this later. And I essentially wanted Photoshop for some of the typefaces to make that little video outro I made on the T60, because I want, but I just ripped off the typefaces from 90, 1995's uh, release of Photoshop and then uh, used image magic on them. But I just installed Windows 98 SE on a IBM T42 motherboard stuck in a T43P uh, chassis, which had a dead motherboard in it. So, but it had the 1600 by 1200 uh, IPS panel, which I quite enjoy. So essentially though, with that, um, I think I might replace it with the 1400 by 1050 one I have, and then put that 1600 by 1200 one in a T60 build. DistroTube says Mac OS is great if you want to buy overpriced hardware with less software support than either Windows or Linux. You know, that actually might be, you know, that's probably true if you consider drivers like firmware stuff. Because Linux actually has surprisingly good uh, software support for drivers at this point. Like, I can actually, um, for example, Debian Jesse, even though it's technically old, old stable, will uh, actually install and run fine on a Pentium MMX or like a K62 chip. And those things can range from like 90 to like 500 megahertz, but it'll run fine at 200 megahertz. And 
I don't know, has support for the onboard graphics, even though it's like some S3 chip, like Cirrus graphics. I'm not even quite sure what it is. But as drivers for some of those really old cards, like the Matrox stuff and things like that, there's, I don't, I doubt you can get Mac OS working on something with a Matrox uh, graphics card from um, the 90s, maybe. Does Matrox still make graphics cards? They might. Uh, I remember that for a while they kind of just went into doing like ridiculous multi-head systems for video displays as their only graphics cards that they manufactured. But I don't know what happened to Matrox. I don't know the company history. Okay, um, so now at this point, I have to search for, well, hopefully I brought them in here. I remember bringing them in here. Okay, here's the X200 I normally use. That obviously isn't the thing we're going to be robbing a panel from. Uh, okay, where did I put these? Oh, they're on the floor. Okay. Um, so, chat, what do you think? Should I go with the uh, X200 uh, I got returned in shipping or a X201 that I bought, which I don't know if the motherboard works, nor do I care very much because it's going to be swapped out. So, um, by the way, uh, I should start selling. Uh, I said, well, Dan. Danny says SSC3 versus AVX2. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about that. Uh, I actually edit my videos using a Ncurses interface for FFmpeg, and I just render them all out on a low voltage to duo. So I essentially just figured out video codecs enough where I can make an editor. And I know there's like instruction sets that actually improve the speed of uh, that type of stuff, but um, I don't, um, yeah. Hey, my laptop is not slower than a, well, the one I'm using here for this live stream is not slower. Even though I could use the other one for the live stream. I actually bought a uh, lo super low voltage processor for it. So, so I heard you can get like 10 hours of battery life. I bought the nine cell and the super low voltage processor, probably gonna do a rebuild on it. And it's gonna be super cool after that. Full 1.2 gigahertz of power. Okay. what? Well, Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do an X201. Just like more typical, like how I typically build these. So we got our X201 here. Parts laptop, which will be do donating a few things for us. So let's see if I, I remember bringing that little flathead over here. The problem with these projects is they uh, require a fair bit of desk space, which I do not have at the moment. Um, I really should do like some sort of workstation setup. Um, okay. Uh, I don't really see why you need like really powerful hardware though. Like uh, I can edit stuff without like, my little FFmpeg setup, and it actually works out pretty well. Um, like I've been editing all my videos like that for the last like probably six months, maybe longer. I don't know. But uh, let me get these stickers off this. Oh God, it's terrible. That, that, that even, 
not get removed. Oh, well, that just popped off. I use that later, or we could use the already cleaned one over here. Um, let's pop the monitor off. So we got to get these screws out, pretty much get all of them out. Uh, we'll put this over here for the meantime. Set this down here. Maybe peer this down a little bit so you guys can see what I'm actually doing. And let's start disassembly. Uh, Josh Cha says, what's your thought on third-party ThinkPad batteries? Will they work? For example, a ThinkPad T510. Um, I, I, uh, generally the cheapest eBay option is half capacity and goes down to like quarter capacity within like a month or two. So I, I don't view them favorably, but they do have one interesting characteristic it's not actually the charge controllers, which makes them so horrible. It's just the condition of the cells that they're filled with. So you can actually buy one of those batteries, supposedly. I've seen it done on like ThinkPad forums and replace all the cells. And then actually get a good battery. But I need to try that at some point. Um, MB asks, hi everyone, honest question. Why use Libreboot if you can just use Core Boot and not include the blobs? Well, I mean, in my opinion, it's just kind of easier. And they do have a few extra things they've written, which is, I think, literally just, well, Core Boot might do this now, but you can, they have like utilities and stuff for like, I can change the amount of like NVRAM with like, uh, through like, and have it be stored in CMOS or something. I don't know. It is kind of uh, not well documented, but the new style of the core boot wiki is kind of a mess too. So they have, uh, I don't know, it's really up to personal choice. I just find it easier because they don't really provide pre compiled blobs for a lot of things. And if I'm gonna go through the effort of like a compiling a blob, or not, not, not sorry, I keep saying blobs. I, I mean pre-compiled binaries. Got there's a little lapse of uh, what is that called? Someone gets the word wrong. But yeah, I mean they don't provide binaries, so it saves me quite a bit of time. And it provides a working core boot. Oh. Uh, LGBT has a new meaning after my Trump rally. Oh, weird. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to politics. The main thing I don't really like about modern politics, though, I, I mean, from someone that isn't really concerned too much with it, is that it seems like people are a lot more aggressive about their political beliefs, which kind of stops the facilitation of ideas between differing factions. And I uh, don't really like the idea of censorship in any way. So whether that be done through social means or actual uh, Companies, I don't know. I mean, a lot of online companies have uh, turned their back on speech, so you don't have Coca Cola ads when someone's saying something that could be construed as offensive, which kind of makes me upset a little bit. But... 
Wait, are you guys talking about like, uh, hmm. Oh, Michael Valentino says, Google is balls deep into cork boots. It matters to some people, so they prefer Libra boots. Hmm. Uh, Gabriel Diniz says, hey, Trip, I like programming a lot. And I'm thinking about changing to the IT area in the future. Do you think it's worth to go to a CS college? Uh, well, you're not going to be really doing IT if you, you end up with a CS degree. Um, I mean, I would always say, but do you have a, do you have money for like, college and if it's not like a hard for you to go like i wouldn't like during freshman year you can kind of just take what classes you enjoy without much uh, repercussions so you could actually just take some like comp side classes see if it's worth doing and if you already know how to program the intro classes will pad out your gpa so and i've actually had some uh, intro programming classes that were kind of interesting. Like, uh, they weren't really hard at all, but, uh, actually, I don't think that was an intro course, actually. Uh, is they got into, like, things like making, like, linked lists and stacks and data structures at the end, so, but it started off pretty easy, um, Hmm. Okay, how do I not lose all the screws turning this over? Maybe they'll just be donated to the screw pile. Oof. Into the screw pile. So if I got all of them. Appears to be one left in the middle. Nope, it's already unscrewed. And uh, let's begin. Oh, wait, I realized it would look a lot cooler to take it off from this side. So let's go take it off. I have actually haven't taken off one backwards before like this. It's kind of interesting. Um, you know, missing a screw? I mean, oh God. I can't tell if this is a screw hole or not. It's filled with some weird liquid glue thing. Okay. Why is it? This is just not fun. It's like someone stuck like, uh, what's that putty called? They use sometimes to stick papers together. Yeah, and there's a screw hole. You should have to remove this one, I don't think. These are typically labeled on the back, and once you get all of them out, typically it just comes right off. But, uh, you know, when you buy pretty much the cheapest ones on eBay repeatedly, sometimes weird things happen. But I bought these a while back, so I can't really return it. So hopefully everything works. Hmm. Oh man, I forgot one right here on the battery. That's why it was so difficult. Um, the best, I don't know. I mean, distro tube out of curiosity. Um, 
What do you use normally? I mean, I'm, I typically just use i3 because it generally just kind of it works without much issue. And, you know, I, I don't really like super customizing everything. Kind of just like systems that work and I don't have to mess with for a long time. Like, I, I think I have Jesse packages in my current install, for example. X Nomad at the moment, says DistroTube. I haven't tried that. Isn't that like the kind of one that ships with X, I guess? Oh. Okay, this is actually kind of difficult to do from the back. Typically, hmm. Holy, oh, I'm beginning to hate this thing. I just like stickers over everything. Uh, I am not. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm using Debian Buster I, or um, with some bullseye packages. It's uh, kind of my setup at the moment. On this system, it just has Debian Buster packages, though. So I'm running this on my like uh, T500. So it'll typically, well, it has a little bit more power than my, or quite a bit more power than X200S. Okay, now I can do it from the front finally. Let's, I've actually never taken one of these off from the front, so it's kind of like flipped, and I can't really see what I'm doing through a screen, but there we go. It's popped out. Okay, it looks kind of cool. There, I got it. We got our working keyboard for our X200 build from the X201. We got a screen and a bezel. So I don't think I'm gonna remove all of these like that just because it seems like it takes 5X the time. So the one thing you don't get though is this has the mouse on it, even though it does fit, but it kind of like the smooth sort of thing. And I don't like uh, the stigial parts. I feel like it's like an appendix if I put it back on the system. You know what I mean? Something that doesn't really do anything. Oh man, this is getting bumpy. But uh, we got it open now. And the easiest way to rebuild these is to actually remove the screen with pretty much the entire little metal bracket up here. It, it just kind of saves time. So that's what I'm going to do. Let me rotate this a bit down. I'm trying to get it where it doesn't shake, though. Man, this is gonna get interesting once uh, I have this rebuilt and I have to somehow manage to fit a Raspberry Pi on with the uh, monitor I have for it, which isn't a tiny LCD. It's actually the, uh, like an Apple IIc monitor. I don't know why that's the only like monitor with uh, composite in I own, but for some reason it is. Okay, remove the bezel. These are annoying, these they break easily. Got that side. Let's get this side. Uh, 
Ah, keep snapping back off. And there we go. We got the bezel off. I'm gonna put this somewhere where it's not gonna get damaged. And uh, now two screws at the back. Oh, uh, no. Okay, got it. Oh man, uh, Zing 2, if you think the one on the X200 is fragile, you should take a look at the X60 ones. It is so much worse. <laughs> Emacs Windows Manager. I mean, you can use it. Don't they have like an internal browser now? Like, you can pretty much just use like instead of uh, GNU slash Linux, like Emacs slash Linux or whatever. Or I guess that's part of the GNU project, but you know, don't really need an operating system. You just need Emacs. You do like the full like Richard Stallman setup. Oh, where did oh. Emacs kernel? Hmm. Oh, no. like uh, in the uh, handbook for Unix haters, they uh, did talk about someone running Emacs on a Lisp machine. have to add new tape because this tape isn't reusable. Uh, electrical tape works just fine though, so it's not really that big of a deal, but it can be kind of annoying. Leave that one on. Need a little bit more slack so I can get it out of there. And I need to take off these two screws right here. You can just leave them in there for now. Um, I'm just going to leave these on here so I don't have to, I keep, I always keep forgetting which one goes to main and which one goes to ops and then I have to look it up every time. So solve that dilemma. I'm just going to leave them on the thing. Take this little cable out. And we can start taking this metal piece out with the screen. Okay, sorry I've been like going silent here. This part right here is just kind of difficult to get everything out without like actually having to take out and redo the wiring, but it is actually the quickest way. I think I need like a, I need like a tiny flathead. I thought I brought one out here. Probably got buried under one of the other parts though. Um, Here, let me organize for a bit. This goes here, a little base panel construction of the new chassis, I guess. And uh, let's see what's under it. Wet white or sir, microfiber cloth, whatever it's called, with uh, alcohol. 
Um, we're gonna have some gum really quick. Um, what else do we have? Hmm. I mean, I can use like a T40 screw to wedge it out. Essentially, it's caught on the cable on the other side, like kind of in that top corner area. Oh, hey, a torque screwdriver. That might work. Spin at the top. And I think we got it. I think like it's about to come out now. And oh fuck, I forgot one cable. I don't even know what this one goes to. Underneath the audio. Oh man. I accidentally pressed the key on the keyboard. But uh, you can just kind of unscrew that and take this off. Let me unplug the uh, Wi-Fi, or not, uh, from it. Now once I get this out, I can remove the tape down here, freeing up the W. You know, some might consider this a downgrade, but this is an X201i, so I'm not really certain that the... Pro I don't think it's going to be that much slower, to be honest. But weirdly, it does have all the WM stuff on here, which is kind of annoying. But there we go. We got our screen off. And now we can take this and just put it somewhere else. For the meantime. Oh, wait. Gotta shake it down for screws and parts, like an audio card thing. Or a, not really an audio card. I don't know if the, it's like the port extender thing. I don't know why they did the uh, design quite like that on here, but it kind of ma makes it so I've always wanted to see if I could shrink it down a little bit, but. I haven't tried that before. Okay, um, time to remove the power supply jack. Get it. Okay, there. So you need to take off the motherboard, I think, too, just so I can remove that cable. Anyone want an X201i uh, motherboard? There's great things you can do with it, like, uh, I don't know, use it as a single board computer maybe, uh, let it gather dust with a bunch of X201 motherboards you have, uh, pretend that you're saving them one day so you can build a cluster. Install Corvoot on it and not be able to use any cleaner and have a bunch of weird errors. Yank the CMOS battery out, it's probably a bit newer. Uh, collect the screws. Slightly unscrew one more screw. Oh man, I need to answer more questions on here. I feel like I've like gone more into the build than the conversation at this point. Uh, carpal tunnel for the win? Was it? Was, oh, okay. You guys are discussing Emacs. It's not my uh, ergonomic half desk uh, nightmare of a build area. Okay, that makes more sense. 
No offense to Emat users. Uh, I don't know. Vim can be a little bit annoying sometimes too, but I, I like the fact that it's you know mainly a text editor, and I can just simply use it as one. A little bit of config files and it does code high highlighting and it's a little bit faster to get around than like nano. I mean, or actually quite a bit faster, maybe not just a little bit. By the way, the X201s actually use uh, different heat sinks, so they're not actually compatible. But luckily, the motherboards I bought come with a little heat sink, so. Yeah, and now we're done with this piece. Move it over here. And we'll start the reassembly of, well, actually, maybe this is just a new unit. I don't even know what to, like, it's like Theseus' ship sort of thing. Like, uh, literally every part of this has been replaced. Like, there's a D450 audio card or daughter board thing from some random uh, X200 or X201 from previous project. There's a brand new uh, or brand, I guess, tested, newly tested uh, motherboard. And um, that's ordered from a refurbishing site. We're going to have our glorious... Uh, LED display here from the X201. Uh, no chassis uh, that doesn't even have markings, or not at least not the MAC address markings, things like that. So let's just have it uh, go back together now. If you're wondering, this is why a lot of the uh, Libre, it seems like this is why a lot of the companies that sell Weber boot computers have stopped doing the X200 because at this point in time, they are hard to find and it's actually easier to get an X201 and go through this process. Hmm. If but boy off Reiko says if IBM made a ThinkPad nineteen ninety nine gaming model, would anyone buy it? What like from nineteen ninety nine or I don't know. I mean, uh, I got a hold of a compact Armada seventeen fifty that works with the battery and everything. I mean, I do occasionally like playing with like Civ 3 and things. Just thinking about using it for that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm trying to figure out where that uh, power jack I just took off went. Not power jack or whatever the uh, female version. I guess it's... Power sockets. The point is, I don't know where the thing went. Oh, sorry. I don't know if uh, I'll be able to monetize this with all the swearing. Found it. Okay, cool. And um, just, uh, since this isn't screwed in, we can just pretty much take it out, plug in our power jack in here. That's the right one. It's the other side. We got our power jack hooked up. And now we could just repeat the process of putting it back in the motherboard. But first, I would actually screw this down here. 
So the power jack on the X200 is actually held in by the screen and the bezel slightly. So because of that, it's just going to be loose for a bit. There's also a ground connector, which you just kind of screw in. So let's see if I can show that off a little bit more. It's what the ground connector kind of looks like. A little uh, steel cable by my hands. Oh, distro tube left. Uh, I guess why distro tube? Hope you sleep well, I guess. I don't know. Well, actually, yeah, have a good night's rest. So, oh man. You know, so maybe like I should have picked like a shorter live stream topic instead of like a rebuild. These generally take like three hours. <laughs> But I guess like a, I'm not like in a real hurry, but hmm. I'm trying to think of some sort of conversation filler. There's plenty of people in the audience. I mean, there needs to be like some sort of like, I, don't, I mean, what would you guys like me to talk about? So I can narrate every step of this, but I feel like it's just a much more elongated and unedited video of how to leap reboot an X200. No multi lib. Fat Elvis says no multi lib. Sorry, was looking at DDWRT. Um, oh, I know what DDWRT is. Uh, oh, I clip in says talk about Android. Uh, I mean. I kind of hate the idea of like app stores run by companies. Uh, I uh, like that it's more open than like iOS and it, it's also uh, Linux. Um, I mean, it's not the new slash Linux or any sort of thing like a mainline distro, but it uses a Linux kernel. So I know people can do some interesting things with CH root. Oh, uh, Gabriel Dinner says, Trip, have you ever uh, got any part from China or, or ThinkPad? Um, yeah, actually, I have. Uh, depends on the part. Like, I've gotten a, a um, little homemade adapter cable for the 10, uh, 15, 1450 by, no, 1400 by 1050 IPS panel. And it was actually in good condition. Like, um, they seem to have uh, done a decent job with it. I have no real complaints. The panel I bought, on the other hand, was absolutely terrible. It was dim. And that mod required some panel disassembly, which I screwed up on, which is why there was never a video about it. The LED light spiced over the point period of a year and a half, I just kind of gave up on that and switched to next 200. But pretty much like anything that's like plastic or not really that complicated, like an adapter, I wouldn't trust their power supplies, is not like a horrible thing to get from China. In fact, it's probably like the only way for some of these things. But I've had bad luck with the batteries for sure. I would not buy those. Unless you're planning on doing like uh, sw swapping out the cells, which I might make a video on later. But uh, let's see if we can give it a little test post. Put this back on. Do some really basic cable management. By really basic, I just mean make sure it's not actually uh, touching anything. And let's make sure this motherboard actually works. Because, and this panel, probably should have tested the panel instead of just straight out of the box into the machine, but it's past the 30 days for returns anyway, so.
Sometimes these can be a little bit of a pain to get on, but most of the time they go on fine, typically. It's going the right direction. See, with a live stream, you could see all my mistakes. Uh, so what is your favorite? Okay. Uh, Soda says, what is your favorite GNU slash Linux distribution? Uh, probably Debian. Um, that says, hope you feel better, Forrest. Well, I hope Forrest feels better, too. Not quite sure what happened to him. I don't know why this keyboard connector is such a pain, but, but there we go. I got our terrible post test ThinkPad set up. Now we just need to drag a cable out here. Here's one. Put this in. Power up. Oh, I'm an idiot. Huh, would have been weird if that came on. We got to plug in the like monitor connector. So that one's actually pretty easy to get in. So, by the way, this is not actually how I reassemble them, but I do like. I probably would post test this before, but oh yeah. Ram, man, I'm just not on my A game today. I need to like, there's a certain level of lack of ergonomics by doing this all in about three square feet, which makes it a little bit difficult. Uh, anyways, though, what is this? Two gigabyte stick. Okay, I'm gonna remove the monitor for now. Take that off. Grab two random sticks to memory. Got our two here. Flip it upside down. You know, the interesting thing is ThinkPads will actually run completely Headless, if you plug in an external monitor. Um, so, yeah, I, I would not recommend like using like this much square like, space to do this project. So it is actually causing quite a challenge here. Normally, I would use said table over there for half the build and this table for half, and I wouldn't have a T500 on it taking up like half the room. So I, I, I might do that just be, so it would be easier, but I wouldn't be able to see the chat log there at all. Which, uh, I don't know. For now, though, I guess I'll stick to my... Horribly unergonomic and probably a bit lackadaisical construction method. Oh, power cord. And now we should actually get some sort of thing on the display. Oh, wrong power cord. That's the power cord for a W530. Or at least it has like one of those weird notches because it's 180 watts. Oh, display cable. You don't actually need this metal panel, but I typically put it back in just because it's right there for like electrostatic reasons or something. But for testing purposes, it's a good idea to know the thing, the machine at least, you know, posts and the fans plugged in. I just saw it spin before you put the entire thing together. So 
Okay, I quick sim says, what would your dream tech related job that actually exists? Probably being like a systems administrator that works from home or like having my own company of some sort, a little bit bigger than just refurbishing think tabs on the internet. Okay, so uh, posts. Now we can begin uh, rebuilding it. Pretty much the entire thing except the touchpad is gonna go on. So I guess let's get started with that. So the little uh, LVDS cable actually rides on top of the caddy there. So they're not, I don't know what this metal thing is. Word caddy the right thing? I'm not quite sure it is. It might be called something else. Who knows? But my main point is it goes on top of it. It's probably like some name in the service manual. It might be like, FRU 44.99 or something. Uh, I, I feel like people would get less of an idea. I don't know, what type of dream tech jobs are there? I mean, there's like uh, working for, I mean, hmm. I'm trying to think of one, like, Honestly, making YouTube tech videos where it's actually profitable and if it didn't have to be like complete consumerist stuff, like, you know, actually Linus Tech Tips isn't the worst out of them, but if I, I would not enjoy doing like Austin Evans job and I kind of have like some slight disgust whenever I see the guy, I don't know why it's just like weird. Is it, you know, he has like a, I mean, a very... Like, like, I feel like I could beat him up and like, I mean, it's not, I'm not exactly really that strong. He just doesn't look like fun to hang out with at all. He, and I feel like he's gonna, like in real life, he's just going to be exactly like, you know, I'm going to meet him one day. He's going to try to sell me something and then smile like some sort of like tech evangelist for the corporate world or something. Which, I mean, like, I actually rather meet, like, you know, uh, someone that works at Microsoft that tries to sell me on, a, like, Active Directory or something like that. And I don't know. Someone trying to shill, like, I don't even know what he does. I don't watch his videos. I just see him, like, posted on G sometimes. It makes me upset. I've never met anyone like that. Where... But uh, I'm sorry if anyone that views this has the name Austin Evans that isn't the Austin Evans on YouTube. And hopefully I'm thinking about the right person. Oh, yeah, C. Marquis Brown. Uh, so hopefully that's the actual name. Uh, Ben's uh, homes for a living. Yeah, I couldn't do phone reviews either. Like, the only thing I, that looks kind of intriguing is, like, the uh, Pine phone, I believe. I could review that one. There's already a lot of people doing, like, the custom Android ROM sort of things. I was thinking about doing some videos on Replicant, but, see, there's a little bit of a... I don't actually use much of the... Like, I'll break my phone all the time and lose it. So I just buy really cheap disposable phones that I can just, you know, use for a phone and occasionally browse the web on. I'm typically happy with those, so. But uh, I have bought, like, a Note 1, but I bought the wrong model for 
uh, Replicant. Uh, I also bought a Nexus that Replicant just refused to work on. It was actually actually a correct model and everything too. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, and I realized something. Although I like troubleshooting things with computers, Android ROMs for me are just not fun. It's like uh, router issues almost. It's not quite that bad, but you know, there's a huge delay in timing before you get to know if something works or not. And the fact that like none of it's hardware and it's just all like just finding random software downloads and things like that, unless you're actively developing for like Android and stuff like that. And I've heard it's heavily Java based, but I might be wrong about that. And I heavily dislike Java, so kind of takes away from the appeal as well. Um, do you have an opinion about Pop! OS and System76? Um, so I was actually thinking about making in this, this into a video, but I'm not quite sure if I, like, okay. I read this, uh, I typically don't read like Reuters or things like that, but they had a list of the top five, five like Linux distributions. Oh, uh, good night, Soda. But uh, Gabriel Danny's uh, my opinion on well, I mean, if it's putting Linux in laptops, it's at least okay. I mean, it's better than uh, you know, uh, like shipping out with Windows 10, so I'll give them that. Uh, and uh, I, I think Purism was the one that like contribute, like has a core boot on everything, right? Uh, those aren't. But either way, I mean, they're kind of out of my price range and things like that. And I've seen their laptops and they don't have a track point, which uh, makes me even a little bit more disappointed. And then on top of that, um, well, they are more expensive than what I want to pay for. <laughs> I actually also am very happy with my easily fixable hardware from 2008. Like out of most of the ThinkPads I use, the only ones I use like on a regular basis are probably this like T500 and a X200S. And I mainly use the T500 as a slightly more than mobile desktop. But uh, Pop! OS is like based off Ubuntu, of isn't it? I mean, it's probably not the worst thing. And I imagine it's like more tailored towards their machines. The person on the Reuters article was raving about it. But he said that the uh, best operating system out there was like Peppermint or something. And I'm just thinking, okay, so you reviewed five... Uh, five uh, distributions that are all based off like downstream of Debian. The last one you mentioned, like trying to repeat like an antidote of uh, having like application based browsing and things like that, which sounds to me kind of like a rebuilding of a wheel I dislike, you know, it's like asking someone to rebuild a studded wheel that's used to torture you in the Tower of London or something, but, you know, uh, to each his own. I mean, I'm sure the developers are nice people. Uh, but that's for, like, Peppermint OS, which kind of made me upset, because I imagine it's not very quick either. So it's like two nails in the coffin for it. Um... But I've actually never tried Pop! OS, and if it's just like one of those distributions that's like kind of tailored more towards a specific hardware or like a specific look, uh, it's not really my thing. Oh, yeah, Gabriel Dennis, I would agree with you about the trackpad thing. Like, I, I want a track point on like all my systems, but. Well, I guess now I'll use the ThinkPads, but 
it would be hard to like install a track point on a lot of systems. Um, you know, I, I've actually considered getting like uh, one of the like the Chromebook Pixel or whatever, the first generation ones, because you can actually put, uh, you know, you can compile your own core boot ROMs and things like that for them. And they have a 2.3 display, which is very close to 4.3 and a quite impressive resolution, but the keyboard on it just looks like it's horrible. And if the keyboard's horrible and all I'm doing most of the time is typing on it, so it really detracts from the machine's worth, even though it's more powerful. Uh, but boy off Reiko says, what do you think of the Intel Atom with no ME? Uh, probably too slow, but you know, it's, uh, not exactly the worst thing. Like, uh, I was thinking about doing a review of my recently I've got a Transmeta laptop, which supposedly is like Spectre and proof or whatever. So I'm going to turn off like page table mitigation and see if that the Spectre exploit thing or meltdown will work on it. You see the Transmeta processors, I think they were actually like, they actually emulate x86 and the last one made is the one I have. And it's a one point, I heard they're about equivalent to Pentium M's, which is barely usable nowadays. Like it's not pleasant, but it'll still like browse and do all the stuff you want with modern Linux software. At least Debian packages, not quite sure about ARC on that level. I don't even think you could run a, like normal ARC on it because it's uh, not 64 bit. The processor that emulates x86 is 256 bit on that one, though, which is kind of a little bit peculiar, I think. It's kind of interesting. Okay, I think I got a lot of this stuff here. If I do the pine spurs, this mess. There's one of them. I wish it threw the screen back on. Very good idea. I make everything a little bit easier. Um. one gigahertz for the best one um there's a 1.6 gigahertz transmeta processor it's like the acelerion or something it starts with an a i'm not quite sure the name uh but boy off Reiko. um i know the atom processors the first generation ones when are uh quite Slow though, they're also kind of on the same page of being equivalent to a Penny MM, which I mean, it is like the slowest thing in the world, but it's pretty slow. Like, uh, single threaded uh, processors or even processors that aren't even like dual core nowadays are kind of hard to use. I mean, I'm sure you could like just run like you know, W3M or links and browse the web and use like WGET for downloads and all that stuff. And maybe you could even use like NetSurf. And, but at that point, like it doesn't really matter what hardware you're using. Like you could be using like a Pentium and still being able to do that. And so much stuff is on the web nowadays and it's a bloated nightmare, so. Okay, uh, I got the screen we screwed in slightly. Uh, we can begin putting the bezel back on, which should just slide back on like this and snap back in. Putting these back in is so much easier than taking them out, just as an FYI. Also, a little bit more satisfying.
Okay. And we will now kind of move on to the second stage after putting a few more of these screws back in. They use silver screws in this area. I'm not quite sure why, because they seem to be about the same threading and length. But one of them is really important because it uh, helps keep the heat sink on. So I'm going to go put that one in. It's the first thing. I don't know. I feel like I'm not going to do my planned original two builds of these in like one live stream because I'm going to be sitting here for like six hours. It's, I think it goes quite a bit faster if I'm... Oh, wait. Hmm. I'm, okay, but boy off. Reiko says, my mom's computer, I had take out a virus take out of a virus town ran a Pentium and was from 2008. Well, hmm. Uh, I mean, did they use like Pentium? It might've been like some Pentium 4. Guitar Matt he says, have something that I can, you know, sell slightly and end up being Accumulating credit card debt. But I do see that it's run quite nice on at this point, and that might actually be nice for running it on actual hardware instead of using a QMU sort of thing. But I'm, I, it's, um, it has like we boot on it, so I don't, I'm not quite sure it'll actually boot up, uh, I don't think it'll boot up Temple OS. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, but I mean, that's not a good thing necessarily if you're in more debt than me. And I do have a Patreon, which uh, um, I don't know. I kind of like limiting my Patreon showing to not like, like just that. Like I was planning on just putting that clip at the end of the video and uh God, I'm really bad about updating my website. I still need to put those ROM files on, but they're in my Raspberry Pi. So it's not like I, I like, all I have to do is just take the like SD card out, plug in my X200, run rsync, and it should be on my website. But I haven't got to that. Okay, well, it's just starting to look a little bit better, more complete. Now time to put the keyboard back in. And we're gonna grab a T400 really quick. This one isn't Weaver booted. But the nice thing about that though is it also has a Wi Fi card in it. This one does not have a Wi Fi card. T60. I don't know which one this is. No, I think this is T400. It's kind of beat up. Uh, so essentially from here, I'm just gonna like open some sort of browser and then I'm gonna download the disk files for the X200 or it might already be on here. Oh, here, let me find that. I have like a little 60 gig SSD or not SSD, hard disk. It's quite warm. Huh. Man, these little quad core chips like actually produce quite a bit of heat when we're running everything. Let's see what the temperature it's at now. Okay, it's at like 60% load and 70 degrees Celsius. That's not that bad. Do I have a tower PC or only think Babs? I quits and asks. Uh, I do have a tower. Um, it has a, a, a K2 in it. You know, uh, oh, uh, have a good one, uh, Mitchell Valentino. But yeah, essentially, I'm going to finish rebooting this, or not this, 
maybe this at some point, but I do actually need some sort of system that's capable of like running Windows just for like some minor sort of things or like when I decide that I need to sell something locally and um, just the market interest for X200 so that it's been rebooted or it's something is typically limited towards the internet, I guess. There's not a whole lot of people I know in person that would want to buy one of these. But then again, I don't hang out with a whole lot of people at the moment, so. Anyways, let's get this thing in here. Mm -hmm. And the amount of work for T400s is a little bit weird. I sold one to one of my neighbors for like $50. They're just throwing an operating system and a solid state drive in it. It was like, I bought, paid five bucks for a solid state drive. And I think like probably like five or 10 bucks for these. They typically go around five or 10 bucks if at Goodwill. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I was like thinking about just doing like typical refurbishing of later model ThinkPads and not listing them on eBay, but listing them on Craigslist and Letgo. So price sell pretty quick. Uh, I do have a uh, W530 though that I might actually do some fun stuff with, but it's missing a battery and I do not have the money for battery at the moment. So kind of limited to doing projects with what I have. I don't know. I was uh, thinking about doing a uh, Lane OS video, even though it was just like pretty much a really bad, it was just a theme for a Windows manager. Uh, that's as far as they came up with it, And nowadays, like it seems like you could uh, imitate that operating system so easily with like just, see, there's uh, programs for like Windows managers where you can put like the little videos and GIFs in the background and make it all animated and stuff. I don't know. But if you're wondering, Lane OS did not get very far. Oh, God damn it. All this install has is Internet Explorer. This is terrible. I have to navigate to the Lenovo site with this. Okay, let me let me go hook up to the Wi-Fi on here. Uh, I clicked some. Oh, oh, but boy, off Rico says, "Where do you get uh, ThinkPads so cheap?" I am in Texacoma and I can't find any. Uh, Goodwill Computer Center, the one in uh, Houston is not so good, but the Austin one is actually pretty decent. Um, uh, I clicked some says. Man, you have way better luck on finding old computers. Good price. Well, it's just I go to a centralized location. Dell actually does their own computer refurbishing place too, and they sell scrap laptops. And uh, yeah, all these uh, laptops I'm using use DDR3. At least in this video. I mean, uh, the T60 uses DDR2. I was thinking about making like, uh, so I have like some working T61s and I have an extra T9600 processor. And I think there's a mod you can do. I'd have to double check where you can uh, simply just, just spray like soldering some cable like on the T500. And then you can use slightly later processors. Uh, I was thinking about making one of those. Uh, I don't know if there's much demand for like a T61 Frankenpad video at this point, but I mean, uh, I could do one of those. Oh my God, I'd have a like ping running in the background for a long time. I'm gonna close that down. I don't know why. Huh. 7,782 packets transmitted. Yeah, as I was playing, uh, oh, I was actually doing Wi-Fi troubleshooting. But I got it working, so let's see what, uh, 
Hmm. Let me just type this in really quick. I don't use this password for anything else, but I don't know how hard it is to find. I don't know. One of my neighbors seemed like they were like stealing my Wi-Fi at some point. So I had to like change the network stuff. But anyways, though, so, uh, like home network. You know, my sad thing is Windows 7 was the last like Windows operating system that, you know, wasn't complete trash. But it was kind of trash. They had that whole like forced upgrade or like borderline forced uh, upgrade to like Windows uh, 10. And then Windows 10 was like the probably my least favorite. Like, be like, oh yeah, that's shit. But the UI in Windows 10 sucks. The privacy aspects of it suck. The business model of it's actually quite good. But aside from, you know, buying shares in Microsoft after that, uh, they, okay, look, Windows 10 was when Microsoft changed from selling a product to just directly selling people's data. So that's why I kind of just hate it with kind of a passion relatively. Lenovo X200 ROM, or not ROM, uh, BIOS update. Let me find the latest proprietary BIOS. And you guys can't see what I'm doing right now. I need to check the chat. Oh, man. Let's see what I missed. Uh, but boy off. Rico says, I have two gaming computers that fuel my ego, but... And I look at Stallman, and my ego is crushed, and I GNU slash die. And Microsoft is like Epstein. Its users are teenage girls. Google is Clinton, and Apple is Trump. I don't know if I'd quite agree with that. I'd imagine most teenage girls use Apple products, but uh, I might be wrong about that. I actually really like iced tea. Okay. Hey, I have to download a more modern browser. God. Hmm. I don't understand how Windows 7 could be like lagging on here. I guess it's because I only put in like one gigabyte of RAM and the hard drive's like just kind of sitting there and some like really old 60 gigabyte drive. So the paging file is probably really slow. But whatever. Just need to download single file off online. It might already be on the system, but it's labeled like 7UU something. Hmm. If Win uh, but boy off Rico says, if Windows became open source and the FSF took control of it, would it even be able to compare to Linux still? Um, uh, I honestly don't know. I mean, like, like Windows 2000 was probably like the last version of it that so didn't have like NT being like completely bastardized kernel wise. And then it just kind of got uh, worse. And the main draw of Windows nowadays is just kind of a legacy support. So, and gaming, and that's just because of like graphics drivers and things like that, and all the software that's written for it. So, uh, I mean, it'd be might be easier to just like, I mean, 
Hmm. Well, I guess porting over software would be more difficult. Like clips in. There's speculation that Windows will use the Linux kernel in the not distant future. Oh, man. I've been sitting in this chair too long. Okay. Let me, fuck it. I'm just going to... Where is uh, my actual X200S that I use? Let me just see if this has like a... I'm pretty sure the non-ass models, yeah, they have SD card slots. Yeah, I'm just gonna download it on there. This is ridiculous. Fucking A. You can actually run a Linux system on a gig of RAM and it's typically relatively okay. Oh wait, no, it's downloading something. Oh. Windows below software specs kind of captures lag in its entirety. I mean, I've ran Debian Jesse or tried to install it on a like a 486 system or not Jesse. Uh, uh, what was the one before that? Squeeze? No, that was a six one. But either way, hey, um, Grub Two was laggy in a four. 486. That's fine. No one uses 486s. They're kind of hard to find, too. But, uh, you know, at this point, like, this isn't even that far off from, uh, oh god, it's just downloading Chrome 18 minutes remaining. Fuck this shit. Yeah, okay. Now, what, what browser do people use on Windows nowadays? I, I don't. So drag and drop the files onto an SD card. Since do I have an SD card? BIOS updates, they are annoying. Hey, uh, yeah, this is my, this is my laptop I use most of the time. Guitar Matt C says, oh, Fat Elvis says the thing I was thinking of was Wheezy for the Debian version. And uh, Guitar Matt C says, install Chocolatey, a CLI package manager for Windows. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of prefer not, like, delving into Windows stuff. And Windows 7 probably on its way out soon, and that was the last version that was at least somewhat acceptable. Like, and I don't know, it's not really that much, I don't really have a point to it, you know? Like, I use, like, I switched from like Windows to Linux kind of uh, probably like four or five years ago. And um, I did like a complete switch like a few years later. Oh, my posture. You're gonna complain about my posture? Is this better? Is this better posture than? Looking down at the screen, my eyesight isn't that bad. I mean, my eyesight's actually pretty bad. Um, oh, sorry if it looked painful. I quick sim. Uh, Peter R asks how it looks with Weaver Boot on the X220. They never finished that. They have Core Boot, uh, though. You can look at my old Core Boot video for the X220. I mean. I, the main reason I don't use an X220 is because the 1366 by 768 display in a trade once I, I got like 
some I got a full HD version, but it wasn't the uh, Nitro caster kit and there wasn't a Linux patch for it. So it was though. I don't know. I really just need to buy like more of these like plastic desks. And now I'm like self-conscious about my like posture. I'm getting cyber bullied. I need to go like call up the internet police something um how it feels to chew five gum um i think actually i'm chewing nicorette so i'm not quite sure it's the same feeling um core boot uh oh yeah core boot um god that's horrible, Guitar Matt. You should really clean your uh, biohazard to your stains off your ThinkPad. I don't know how those got there. Um, Fat Elvis says the 22-year-old or 22 O has a MTM status plot under the palm rest if they recall for a nice and SSD. Uh, well, okay, so to answer your question on the uh, core boot, on how it looks on the X220, so essentially it really depends on what BIOS payload uh, you actually like put on there. So you can put on CBIOS, and that's essentially what I did the second time. The first time I put on a Grub chain loader, which just was Grub, but it would instantly load the next Grub config file based off its location in Debian, which actually worked pretty well, but CBIOS does have more BIOS options and you can add secondary payloads in CBIOS. You can have CBIOS chain load Grub, for example. And if you had enough space, you could even put um, CBIOS that, or like not CBIOS, but you can even put Linux kernel images and have those boot, but you have to desolder the chip and put on a different one. So Core boot doesn't really have a definitive look to it. It really depends on the payload. So, and you can add background images to CBIOS as well. I am sorry about all the biohazard stained uh, think pads. I mean, I, I, you know what, actually this is, I'm gonna just ignore this topic. Okay, so we just need to search that up. And uh, let's get the X200 booting. Unplug this. Yeah, maybe I'll, I don't know, I might do that P60 mod. Uh, it seems like a lot. Oh, sorry. Um, I am not shipping ThinkPads with cum stains. I don't know why I even had to say that. Actually, if you're curious about the cleaning process, I typically use isopropyl alcohol and a magic eraser on them. So I do buy used parts, but most of the used parts I buy typically come in good condition. Huh? Oh my God. Okay. So at this point, I'm essentially just powering this on, seeing if it'll boot into Windows so I can update the BIOS to the latest version. And then from there, I can pretty much just go into my Libre boot process and get the Raspberry Pi set up. So, hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I, I kind of didn't realize thinking that like there's actually quite a lot of sitting around when it comes to doing laptop refurbishing. Like if you actually go to like a uh, place that does it, they typically have stations set up and they do volume over like proper fixes. And by that, I mean like they don't actually, when they have a unit that's damaged in a smaller way, but that would take a lot of time to repair or they don't have a part on stock, they typically just scrap it and move on to the next one. And then they, at the Goodwill location, like good, uh, does a lot of it, like Goodwill Computer Center, they weren't actually allowed to buy new parts, which is mismanagement. So it was a bit of a, uh, well, conundrum. And it also kind of explains why I can get ThinkPads really cheaply. But the best part is if you volunteer there and scrap them out yourself, you can still buy them. And if you know for sure that one was scrapped just because it didn't have a caddy, you essentially got like a, you know, $30 T440 or something like that. So. Oh, God. You know, I'm just going to, I don't know, like, how to switch the, uh, I guess, top conversation topic. Like, uh, I mean... I mean, I do programming videos sometimes. Uh, does anyone have any programming questions or issues? I'm really just waiting on this thing to start up with that slow drive. So it's kind of like... Zing2 says average ThinkPad user on the previous discussion. Okay, um, that boy off Rico says Lisp versus C for minimalism. Uh, I mainly know how to program C and C++. Um, I mean, I did try to learn Lisp at some point, but no one will actually take me seriously if I talk about it, but... Uh, there are some like interesting systems that like actually just ran Lisp as an operating system, like old Lisp machines, and uh, those are kind of cool. And that's like the optimal minimalism. I'm sure if you're an Emacs user, you probably like Lisp a bit more. Uh, dot 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 asks, what is the purpose of Rust if most things that you you do on other languages are unsafe, uh, require you to pretty much throw its memory safety into the trash. Okay, so. so. Hmm. Uh, I haven't used Rust, but. I heard it's better for things that, like making multi-threaded applications. Um, I'm typically used to the memory safety of, uh, hey, let's see if this thing will seg fault somewhere, have like a buffer overflow. Like, I, like um, one of the algorithm sort of things that use like a recursive function in my uh, image library thing I wrote for the music video type thing actually caused the stack overflow and I had to re rewrite that type of stuff. But I mean, C does have threading though. So there's a lot of stuff written in C already, but I've seen people use Rust to kind of just develop stuff a little bit quicker. Like there's that one dude that wrote an entire operating system in Rust, for example, in a relatively short amount of time. But um I mean, part of the thing is like uh, the more typically the more abstracted a language is, like 
it's like efficiency versus development time. So the one exception to that I would put uh, is Java because that's literally like they designed a language for like large projects where they could get inexperienced programmers, aka made something for outsourcing pretty much. But um, like most of the time, it's really just the trade-off of uh, efficiency versus like programming time. Like Python, for example, is one of the slowest languages, but it's still used quite frequently. Like they even use uh, it for like some AI stuff, even though the, the actual performance parts of it aren't actually running in Python. It provides a relatively simple way to do complex stuff, especially when it comes to actually like manipulating text and things like that in a short period of time. But uh, at least like compared to just programming the same thing in C, And uh, I don't know. I mean, it's really just uh, what you're trying to make, what your development cycle is and things like that. Oh yeah, uh, I think Guitar Math uh, talked to me about like MicroPython earlier. Uh, but well, off Reiko says, would you rather install a Visual Basic program or Java program for a week? Uh, probably Java. Just because Visual Basic, I don't want to install Wine and a bunch of things like that. I don't know. What I really need to do is like set up some sort of like uh, network boot system here. Because that's what they actually used at that uh, computer repair place. And it saved them quite a bit of time. Especially since I'm mainly doing, uh, oh my God, like older ThinkPads. Okay. So ThinkPad bot, I need to Google this. 7VET95WW. I pretty much just need to figure out if this is for a T500 or an X200. So. I think it's the X200 one. Hopefully, you know, it probably will complain at some point. Oh, it's also gonna complain I don't have a battery installed. Huh. So, uh... Let's get that battery in here. Okay, battery. Which one of these has... I believe this battery is actually new old stock and hopefully it's charged. So I don't have to sit here looking like a jackass. Hmm. Uh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. I'm running out of discussion topics. Like it's been two hours and 20 minutes. Um, oh God. Oh great, I have to, I don't have a Wi-Fi card in this. I have to find it. Okay, now I have to get up and actually find a second. Okay, I'm gonna like just rotate my laptop here. I do actually need a second ethernet cord, but it's on the other side of the room. Actually, I think this rotates, yeah, this does. Yay, messy lab. 
What is the worst program ever? Oh, and Zing2 says, how's the weather? The weather is actually quite nice today. It's like not super hot and it's not super cold. So I don't have the heater or AC running in the background. And the worst program ever, um, I between Java and JavaScript. Because JavaScript just made the web horribly laggy and requires me to run like programs that I actually can't see what they do. And Java is just such a pain. Like I hate developing anything in it. Plug this in here. Oh, man. Okay, so hopefully that boots up in the windows and I can put the BIOS update. And we can move on to doing the interesting stuff of setting up the Raspberry Pi. I might actually do it over there. Dot, 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 dot says, don't you think setting up networking on Debian with slash uh, EPC network interfaces is a bit of a pain in the ass and painting compared to using uh, system D or slash network D or network manager. Uh, I use network manager because it is kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, I've done it before, but it's not exactly fun. Hmm. Okay, just need to rotate that and oh. Maybe the opportunity where contact cleaner is necessary. For patients. There's no CMOS battery installed. So BIOS, I mean, I guess we could put BIOS settings, but they would. I think it's trying to boot off the, the network for some reason, which doesn't really make sense. I think we're using that for dog. Oh yeah. Here's the other thing I used to clean think caps. Magic erasers. They actually work quite well. Uh, 